At first, it was dismissed. Western analysts called the Su-57 a disappointment and noisy, oversized radar-reflecting dinosaur in the age of sleek stealth jets. They said it wasn't invisible enough, not fast enough, not advanced enough to them. It was a wannabe F-22 a flawed imitation trying to keep up. But what if they were wrong? What if Russia wasn't trying to copy America's stealth playbook, but was writing its own? What if the Su-57 isn't a failure, but a different kind of predator? One that doesn't care about hiding because it knows how to survive in a battlefield, where nothing stays hidden for long. This isn't just a jet, it's a message. And if you think it's just a showpiece you haven't seen what it can really do, because once you understand the design, the strategy, and the brutal purpose behind the Su-57, you might realize the future of stealth might not be about being unseen. It might be about being unstoppable. And if you love exploring the truth behind military tech and air combat, subscribe to Phantom Aviation. We dig deeper because in this sky, only the well-informed survive. Section 1. The Birth of a Rival The Su-57 didn't start as a shadow in the sky. It began as a statement, a bold move by Russia to break into the elite club of fifth generation, stealth fighters. America had the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Lightning II symbols of dominance, precision, and power. Russia wanted its own answer, something fast, something lethal, something uniquely Russian. So, in the early 2000s, the PAC-FA project was born. Its goal, create a next-gen multi role fighter that could challenge NATO's best not just in showrooms, but in actual war zones. But the road was brutal. The first prototype flew in 2010, then came the headlines. Test crashes, engine delays, budget, problems, deadlines slipped, features were cut, and the jet many hoped would shock the world became a punchline instead. Critics mocked its exposed engine nozzles, its patchy radar signature, and the fact that it wasn't even fully stealth. To them, the Su-57 wasn't a predator, it was a paper tiger. But, while the West laughed, Russia didn't stop. It kept refining, tuning, testing, in real combat zones, like Syria, because while the world expected a stealth clone, Russia was building something else entirely. Section 2. Redefining Stealth. The Russian wits. True on paper. The Su-57 doesn't match American stealth standards. Its radar cross-section is larger. Its engine nozzles are exposed. Its airframe isn't as smooth, and the stealth coating isn't as advanced. To the Western eye, that's a red flag. But here's where the misunderstanding begins, because Russia never set out to create an invisible ghost. It set out to build a hunter that thrives in visibility. Where the US focused on low observability, Russia focused on survivability. Instead of going ill in on stealth, the Su-57 blends moderate stealth with something more Russian, rugged design powerful sensors, smart countermeasures, and raw combat endurance. In other words, the Su-57 wasn't designed to be untouchable. It was designed to take hits and hit back harder. It's stealth not as a magic cloak, but as a tactical tool, just enough to get close, just enough to confuse radar. And when it's seen, it's ready to fight on its own terms, because in Russia's war doctrine, invisibility isn't everything, but resilience is. Section 3. Eyes that don't blink if the Su-57 can't hide like an F-22. It makes up for it by seeing everything. The heart of this jet lies one of its most underestimated weapons, its eyes. The Su-57 comes equipped with a powerful IRST system infrared search and track. It doesn't need to use radar to find you. It can sense your heat signature from miles away, even if you're flying stealth. That means even a supposedly invisible jet like the F-35 can still be spotted, hunted, and tracked. But Russia didn't stop there. The Su-57 also carries side-facing. Radar's a rare feature, even among modern fighters. It can scan the airspace not just ahead, but beside it. That gives it a 360-degree combat awareness. Like a sniper with eyes in the back of his head, it can lock onto targets without making a sound. It can watch multiple aircraft from strange angles. And it does all of this while staying radio silent. Ghost with perfect vision. In modern aerial warfare, seeing first means striking first. And the Su-57 wasn't designed to disappear, it was designed to watch. Section 4. A survivor. Not a showpiece from the outside. The Su-57 might not turn heads like a futuristic sci-fi fighter. 
It's not built to impress airshow crowds. It's built to survive when the world around it is falling apart. Russian engineers designed the Su-57 with one brutal question in mind. Can it fight when everything else is broken? That's why it has reinforced landing gear, wide tires, and mudguards not for looks, but for function. This jet can take off from bombed runways, icy fields, or even rough roads. In a real war, where clean air bases are the first to go, that's not a luxury, it's a necessity. It also runs lean and mean. It doesn't rely on a massive team of ground crews or pristine conditions. One pilot, one cockpit. One deadly mission, inside. The aircraft assists the pilot like a silent co-pilot identifying threats, shifting targets, and making split-second decisions faster than human reflexes. This jet doesn't need a red carpet. It needs chaos. Because that's where it shines, critics called it a showpiece. But the battlefield proves otherwise. This machine wasn't made for show. It was made to come back home. Section 5. Countermeasures that fight back most fighter jets dodge missiles. The Su-57. It blinds them. One of the most advanced features hiding beneath its rugged frame is something few jets in the world have. DIRCM. Directional Infrared Countermeasures. It's not a flare. It's not evasive flying. It's a laser weapon designed to disorient incoming missiles mid-air. Here's how it works. When a heat-seeking missile locks onto the jet, the Su-57 tracks it in real time. Then, using its DIRCM turret mounted behind the cockpit, it fires a laser directly into the missile's seeker. The missile loses focus, veers off course, and disappears into the void. No boom, no impact, no drama, just survival. In a world where one missile can end a $100 million aircraft, that kind of defense is game-changing. It doesn't just escape danger, it confronts it, and in close-range dogfights or missile-heavy zones, that's not a gimmick, that's life or death. The Su-57 may not vanish from radar, but it has a different kind of magic it turns incoming death into blind confusion. Section 6. Brain of a commander The Su-57 isn't just a fighter jet, it's a flying command. CenterDot, unlike traditional aircraft built for solo missions, the Su-57 is designed to coordinate an entire network including unmanned drones like the S-70 OKH, OTNIK, dot in the air. It becomes the brain of a deadly system. It can share radar data, assign targets, and guide drone strikes all while staying out of harm's way. Think of it like a quarterback in a war zone. It doesn't have to score every hit. It just has to see the field, call the plays, and control the chaos. This concept is called loyal wingman warfare and Russia is one of the few countries testing it in live operations. In this system, stealth becomes less about disappearing and more about directing destruction without exposing the human pilot. Even if the Su-57 never becomes the most invisible jet, it might become the most intelligent one. And in tomorrow's battlefield, the jet that thinks faster wins. Section 7. What the West still doesn't get from day one. The Su-57 was judged by Western standards Radar stealth, factory, Polish. Mass production, but Russia never played by those rules. Western analysts saw uneven panels and missing low observable coatings and declared the jet a failure, but they missed the bigger picture. The Su-57 isn't meant to dominate a clean, controlled battlefield. It's meant to survive in the kind of messy, brutal wars that Russia prepares for, where GPS is jammed, bases are bombed, and perfect conditions never exist. This jet isn't designed for a trophy case. It's designed for a world that's falling apart. In Syria, it wasn't tested on runways with red carpets. It was tested on real missions with sand in the engines and targets changing by the second. While the West, judged by appearances, Russia, was building something built for endurance. And now, as new global tensions rise, the same jet that was once laughed at might be the one built for the wars that are actually coming. Because sometimes, the best fighter isn't the prettiest. It's the one that's still flying when the dust settles. Section 8. A new kind of stealth so. Is the Su-57 a true stealth fighter? Not in the way the West defines it. Not invisible, not flawless, not mass-produced with perfect panel alignment. But maybe that's the wrong question. Because stealth isn't just about being unseen. It's about being untouchable. About seeing the enemy first. About surviving what others can't. And by those standards, 
The Su-57 isn't just a stealth fighter. It's a survivor, a leader, a silent D-I-S-R-U-P-T-O-R. It breaks the rules not because it can't follow them, but because Russia never intended to. This jet wasn't built for parades. It was built for the next generation of war the kind, where invisibility fades, and only adaptability remains, the kind of war we're not ready for. So, was the Su-57 just a showpiece? Or is it the first glimpse of a new doctrine where strength comes not from hiding, but from hunting in plain sight? If you want more deep dives into the misunderstood machines reshaping modern warfare, subscribe to Phantom Aviation, because in the battles ahead, information isn't just power IAT survival.